What's up, Cubs, and welcome to episode 52 of Cheer Up, Babe, the podcast. I'm your host, as always, VJ Julio, and like I already said for some reason, this is episode 52. All right, welcome to the show. Always adjust this damn boom arm immediately out the gates. You'd think I'd do it probably 10 seconds before I hit record, but I don't because I got to feel it out as we go. Welcome back to another episode, babe. Did you have a good week last week? Well, guess what? We're going to have even a better one this week. It's going to have we're going to have a rip roaring good time, dude. It's going to be a blasty blast. And I will admit from the jump right now, uh we're going to be dropping that cadence a little bit today. Okay. We're going to be happy hunky dory telling stories, laughing and stuff and ha <laughs> giggle pits and you know, ignoring our responsibilities. But every now and then we're going to have to drop the cadence because we got to get a little bit serious today and not towards you, babe. Never towards you, okay? I'll never be mad with you. Sometimes I'll be disappointed, but I'll never be mad with you. I'm going to be real fucking irritated with the people we talk about later on because here's the deal. I set up all the videos and I have it all prepped out and ready to go. But here's the thing. I didn't like watch the videos to think about what to say because as we know, I like stuff to come from the gut, but that's for later. We're going to save that for later. Let's talk about the week. I don't know. What did my crazy ass do this week, dude? Fuck. Oh, how about let's talk about this weekend? Let's talk about today, this morning. I mean, you know your man's just is a fucking wild child, okay? Your man's got the beautiful wife, two beautiful daughters. You know that your man's just fucking gets ripped on the weekends, all right? Right when that sun comes up, those feet hit the floor, we go fucking crazy. What do we do? Went to the public library. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Took my daughter to the public library. It's her new favorite place of all time because we all know her for her first word. Her first word was what? Bus, right? Which sounded like puss right there, but I didn't mean it to sound like bus. Books. Her first word was books, and it's her favorite thing. And we read books for minimum an hour a day okay over it at this point but gonna continue to do it because it's for the betterment of my child dude went to the public library today our public library never been there before is enormous cool i didn't know public libraries were actually kind of fucking cool i got we checked out books like it was 1988 we got a library card what the fuck you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even know that existed. I thought everything was going to be online. I thought that the public library was like a front because I was like, people don't go in here for sure because people don't read books. It's 2022. I know for a fact that people don't read books. Only motivational speakers on Instagram read books. You know, the guys that are like, go to bed early, um, make your sheets, read 15 minutes a day. Those are the only 13 guys on the planet that read books. Everybody else doesn't read books. And I know that, right? Other than the two uh, friends of mine on Twitter, because they always tweet posts from their books. And then the other one subtweets it and they go, oh my God, seriously, that part made my heart melt or whatever the fuck, stupid shit. Hey, text each other. Okay. But we went to the public library. It was awesome. Gracie was in fucking heaven. Charlotte slept the whole time because she's a, the greatest fucking baby of all time. She's like, does this one involve me? All right, I'm going to take a nap. Like, that's her. You know, when she's awake, it's all fucking guns blazing. She's practicing her steps. You know, she's doing the rock crawl when she gets to her belly. She's like posting up all postured and shit like we should all be right now. Posture up. Stop slouching. Jesus, you're embarrassing us. Shoulders back and down. Okay. Chest tall. Chin up just a little bit. All right. But Charlotte does that when she's belly down on the floor learning how to crawl. But if she goes, this one's not really about me, I'm going to take a fucking nap. That's what she does. Best baby of all time. And when she's hungry, she goes, eh. and that's about it. She's awesome. She's awesome in terms of baby things. Also, she gets so ferocious now if she's a little bit hungry. So she doesn't throw fits like a normal baby. She doesn't like scream or cry or whatever. Gracie did brush her hair with a fork, like a plastic toy fork yesterday, and that was the most I've ever heard her cry, and Gracie didn't poke her. Jordan and I went, huh, and Charlotte scream cried because Jordan and I went, huh, and Gracie just, all Gracie had done was brush the top of her hair one time with a plastic toy fork. So I guess that's her trigger. I think that she was attacked by plastic forks in her past life. Because it's the first time I've ever seen her act like that. But regardless, I'm getting 
I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, we went to the public library. It was awesome. Gracie was in heaven. She's just like, we walked in, dude. We walked in and she went, whoa, which is so cool. A baby expressing genuine emotion and surprise. She's there. She's at that point now. And it was the cutest shit of all time. We uh, ran into an adorable family with two little girls. One's five, one's three. And one of their names was Charlotte. And I was a little upset. One thing that hasn't happened to me yet is that I've ran into another kid that has the same name as my kid. And I went, that's not your name. And she said, no, my name's Charlotte Rose. And I said, that's not your name. Pick a different name. She said, what? And I said, pick a different fucking name right now. And then her dad walked up to me. He had shoulder length hair. He was a really sweet guy. And I said, change your daughter's fucking name. And he said, excuse me? And I was like, I'm not going to yell because this is a public library. But I'm going to grab you by those gorgeous fucking locks and throw you out this window if you don't change your daughter's name. And he said, well, what should I change it to? And I said, something normal. And he goes, do you have an example? And I said, Taylor. And he's like, that's my wife's name. And I said, perfect. She can be Taylor Jr. So that's how the public library went. <laughs> um no, but for real, the, dude, my oldest interacting with older kids, she has all the confidence in the world. I watch her interact with strange kids who she doesn't have any, she has no hesitancy. She walks up, she walks up to these little girls and she's like, come here. <laughs> first, first interaction. Okay. They hadn't even seen her yet. She walks up to him and she's like, come here. And they're like, hi. And they're like, what's your name? She's like, Gracie. Oh my God. So cute. Right. And then they all read books together and it was awesome. But the oldest one's name was Charlotte. And then another family comes in and the mom's all hooting and hollering like she's depressed about her life. She was one of those. You know, when you see certain people walk in and they just have that look of like, oh, they're sad, but they're sad because I don't know. They don't have a dick in their mouth or they're, that was probably a little bit harsh. They're probably more sad because they're there at the library by themselves. Where's your husband on Saturday? Probably deadbeat. Okay. See, I flipped it, but it could be one of many things. Maybe she's an alcoholic and it's too early in the morning to get started. Who fucking knows? You know, I just like to jump to the worst accusations possible. And then I pull back the layers as I go. Okay. I ask for forgiveness, not permission. That's what it is. All right. But she walks in and she's hooting and hollering at her kids where I'm just like, it's the kids section of a library. Let them have some fun. But she said, Gracie, get over here. And I said, shut the fuck up. One hour and a half out and about in the fucking public library in Minnesota. And I have a Charlotte and a fucking Gracie. Shut the fuck up. So I'm changing my kids names to things that uh, will never be picked up again. You know, like Gracie naturally is going to get her name changed to Onomatopoeia Kuno. Okay. And then Charlotte, I'm going to change her name to Gracie and it's going to work out perfect. Okay. But dude, it was so cool. Just watching your kids interact with other kids is like the coolest fucking thing. Like you're just like, you're not scared at all. Like, like, like the innocence of children, they just don't have that like, oh, I should be nervous around new people. Or, oh, I wonder if these people are like me. She's just like, hey, come here. And then they played blocks and read books for the next hour. It was awesome. It did help that those two little girls are, they were, first of all, in matching baggy dress sweaters and pants. Adorable. I mean... Melt my heart into my shoes, dude. So cute. But they were also the most polite. But there's the one little girl, the younger one who was three, kept coming up to me and trying to get her to, trying to get me to play with her. And I and I would like there was this like thermo handprint thing. You put your hand on it and it changes colors. Something toxic. And then she was like bringing me through this puzzle. And she she was she was holding up a piece to me. She's like, "What's this?" And I'm like, "That's a train." And she was like good and played like don't fucking test me okay now granted it was an ego boost because i got every single one right but don't test me okay 29 it's not how this works but she was like interacting me with 
interacting with me really hardcore for like five minutes and Gracie started being like, that's enough. Okay. Gracie comes up to me and she has her eyebrows furrowed because my daughters, both of them are all eyebrows all the time. They have not had a hesitancy of expression since they came out of their mother's vagina and it's all eyebrows all the time. You know, like Gracie was listening to the Itsy Bitsy Spider tonight and I said, you want to put it on pajamas? And she looked at me for over six seconds, direct eye contact, eyebrows basically fucking touching. She's furrowing her eyebrows so hard, right? And she looked at me like I was an idiot. And then she obviously capped it off with, no. She drug out her no. She knows how to inflect her words so that they add more sting. She knows that no is the main thing that breaks dad's heart, but now she knows how to inflect and add sting. And she looked at me for a full six seconds to where I felt uncomfortable. And then she said, no, like dumb fuck. You know what I mean? So, but Gracie comes up to the, the little girl. So the little girl was in the middle of holding up the puzzle pieces to me. Like, what's this? And I'm like, that's an airplane. Fucking nailed it. You know what I mean? And she was like, good. And I was like, well, what can I say? I am what I am. I'm a hooligan. hooligan. Every single time I got one right, I was like, fucking Tiger Woods fist pump. I am what I am. I'm a hooligan. hooligan. Dude, I'm so stupid. Why do you guys listen to this podcast? I'm stupid. Okay. Because it's fun. I answered my own question. Yes. Tiger Woods fist pump. I am what I am. I'm a hooligan. hooligan. But Gracie came up to the little girl and she was like looking at her through the side of her eyes. Like she had her face turned towards me and she was looking at the girl with her eyes and her eyebrows were touching. And she goes, no. <laughs> and, the, and I was like, it's okay, baby. Come here. You want to play puzzle with us? And she was like, doesn't break side eye contact with the little girl. And she's like, no. And I was like, Gracie, you want to come sit on my lap? And she goes, come here. And I, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go with her for just a second to the other little girl because the other little girl doesn't matter, right? The only thing that matters is my kids. The only thing that matters. So I tell the little girl to go fuck herself. And then I'm just kidding, dude. That's so fucked up to say. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go with her for a second. And Gracie took my finger and stood me up. And walked me like four paces away and stopped. She had one goal. She said, come here. And I said, okay, I'm going to go with her. Grabs me, walks me four f fucking steps, and then just stopped and stood there. And I was like, all good. And then she just left and went and played. So she was just like, that's enough of that shit over there. Grabs my, come here, dad. Grabs my hand, pulls me away from the situation and says, okay. Don't go back to playing with her and then goes off and fucking plays. I didn't want to play with you, dad, but I was so fucking sick of seeing that. That was making me so irritated. I was so sick of seeing that, dude. <laughs> and that's what we did. And then we came home and we watched the NCAA wrestling tournament and it was fucking awesome and I got all fired up. So ultimately what I'm saying is have kids, okay? Have kids. It's fucking fantastic. You get to watch a, cool, a, a bunch of really cool things happen in front of you and you get to watch your kids grow up. So if you're thinking about having kids, hey. Take a load, you know, or give a load, depending on who you are. Depending on whose ears this is coming into, hey, take a load, give a load, all right? Whichever one suits you, just do it, dude. Kids are the fucking best. You might say, this is the scariest world to bring a kid into. Yeah, but what if they come in and run it? You know what I mean? What if your kid comes in and then runs the show? Then that's all I'm trying to do. That's all I'm trying to create. <laughs> God damn. Are you guys cozy comfy right now? You feeling good? You feel the vibe? You know, you're going to have a good fucking week. Can you feel that? You feel that in your chest and in your soul? I hope you're smiling right now. If you're not smiling, smile it up. Okay. Smile first. Believe it second. All right. Now, let's talk about the antithesis. Wow. Stuttering. Having a brain aneurysm. Let's talk about the antithesis to cheer up air the podcast what would you say if you had to guess what the antithesis to cheer up air the podcast is let's keep it in concepts of podcasts right would you say 
Is something political and sad? Close, but not really. Let's talk about the base fundamentals, all right? What am I all about, okay? I'm all about my family first, right? And my family is comprised of all what? Women, right? Girls, women, bad bitches, whatever you want to say. So you could say that the antithesis to Cheer Up Babe the Podcast would be the antithesis to my life, which is guys who hate girls. Or to put it in a different term, Alpha Male Podcasts. Now, we know how we feel about the fake alpha males, right? We know that guys that call themselves alpha males are not, right? Because they're hiding that insecurity deep down. Actually, you know what's, you know what's great? It's not deep down because these dumb fucks open their mouths and you get to hear what's going on inside their brain. A lot of times it's not a lot. A lot of times it's not the most astute observations to the world, but they open their mouth so we know where their, where their emotions and their feelings and their actual thought patterns lie. So we get to actually hear how fucking dumb they are. So first of all, to start this off, um, big shout out to, uh, Chad, Chad, she's a YouTuber and she does like commentary videos on YouTube. She also is fucking hilarious and writes awesome jokes to her commentary videos. And also another shout out to penguins zero, which is another YouTuber who has so many fucking subscribers. It's insane. He has like 10 million subscribers, but also at the same time, penguins with a Z and a zero, I mean, change it, right? Like make a different name now that you're bigger. Okay. It's also not capitalized bothers the shit out of me, but that's besides the fucking point. Okay. That's besides the point. The reason that I'm shutting them out up front is because all of the content that we're going to talk about for the rest, not for necessarily the rest, we're going to do some unqualified data advice and stuff, but all of the content that we're going to be going over in this next little bit, was found because of their two commentary videos on these quote alpha male podcasts. Now, let me just break down what an alpha male podcast is. Okay. It's just like three to six dudes sitting in a room with microphones in front of them talking like guys. Now, here's the thing. Your man's has had plenty of interactions talking with the guys. And it's like one of those things where it's locker room talk. You're bullshitting, you know, half of you know, no, I would say all of you know that you're amping it up for the group in order to make the group laugh because that's all it really is. It's just shit talking for the sake of shit talking. It's comedy. Basically, you're just trying to be funny to one another. So you'll say shit, egregious shit to get a funny response, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now take that context. Okay. Put it in a room full of microphones and then these guys though the things they say they mean it it's not jokes okay it's not in the spirit of being funny it's in the spirit of being serious and that makes it one thing for me and that's sad okay And one thing that we're for sure not going to do is say the names of these podcasts on this podcast. And you might be like, well, that feels like plagiarism or whatever the fuck. It's not. I just don't want to give them attention. Okay. I just don't want to give them the respect of Cheer Up Babe the Podcast. They're not going to taint this episode with their actual name. We're just going to refer to them as this podcast or that podcast, because it doesn't matter. Now, the first one, dude, okay, so these guys, I just got to get, I'm going to give a little preempt to this. These guys have the energy of the football player whose dad was an alcoholic and always said, like, my son's going to play pro or some shit like that. And then they didn't live up to their dad's expectations. And now they're 35. And that translates into a hatred for women. That's what I'm going to say. Okay? That's the energy. Okay? It's these guys that are like, I didn't learn any actual skills. I don't know what to do. 
I, I listen to a lot of Gary Vee, but I don't know what to do in order to accrue a lot of money. And I know that once I have money, that makes me better than every single person. But I don't have the money yet, but you got to fake it till you make it. And it's sad. But having said that, fuck these guys entirely. And you'll hear what I'm talking about, okay? You might be like, you're really fucking putting it out there. You're really selling it, you know? Just listen. Racket of fucking really financial. I'm not, you know, but one day I will be, when I'm in that bracket of like being fucking rich as fuck. Right. Anytime you're talking about your finances in the future and you say, one day when I'm fucking rich as fuck in seriousness, you're not going to be okay. I'm not going to throw any careers underneath the table, but at the same time, you're going to sell cell phones at Verizon. Like dude, I'm sorry, but you're going to sell cell phones at Verizon and you're still going to be a cock. I feel like, you know, especially like, I don't know. Like a lot of dudes get played for their fucking money, and, said, yeah, a lot. And they get, and they look look like fucking fools. After because he said one sentence and it's taken him thirty five seconds. Okay, he he has said one day when I'm fucking rich as fuck, I feel like guys get played for their money, and I said that in one tenth of the time. So stumble over your words. You obviously have very articulate and astute observations. Let's hear what the, what you have to say. Because after a while too, you know, money can only get you so far with getting getting pussy and shit. Oh, and the entire impetus for it for was that, right? The entire impetus for why you want to have money is should we circle back? Why do you hey don't know your name? Trevor, why do you want money? You're fucking fools. After because after a while too, you know, money can only get you so far with getting getting pussy and shit. Well Right. Right. Because everyone knows that the only way to get laid is to have money. Or they can see who you are as a person. It depends. And, the end, and, and it's true. And like, they'll be like, oh, fuck them. I'm tired of them. I'm fucking housewife. That bitch was plotting. He was plotting yeah. from the jump. You know, it's funny because uh, I was that's like, her personal need. Yeah, right. Which I don't understand. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, like, fuck that. why, why are you going to use my money that I fucking made to do something? Yeah. If the, okay, so obviously, none of them know what they want to say. They just feel it in their soul. You know, none of them know how, let's put that better. None of them know how to say what they want to say, but they feel it in their soul, you know? So I don't know if you picked up on what they were even trying to fucking say, but what they were trying to fucking say is, I'm going to be rich as fuck, <laughs> natch, right? I'm going to have so much money. It's going to be coming out of my chode. Right. But you better believe that once I do, bitches are going to flock in. But it's like, I don't want girls that want me for my money, even though that I think that that's the only way to get pussy. But once I get it, bitch, I don't want you spending my money. So just really, really hammering it fucking home with the... Uh, with just being a good guy, like the type of guy that you would want, you know, your daughter to bring home. If you want money, you ask for it. And I'll uh, uh, gladly give it to you. Yeah. Especially if you're sneaking money we're out We're financially day. fucking well, way better off than most. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Just don't like fucking. Yeah. I fucking agree. But like, I should have done a fucking count for how many times they said, yeah. Because they don't know what they're fucking saying, dude. Okay, so the, my issue with this, all right, is all of these guys present themselves like studs, right? Like in their mind, they think they're the fucking shit, okay? And my problem with people like this having a podcast is that you get this podcast across the ears of like a 15-year-old. That kid is going to think that this is the type of values and standards that you should uphold First of all, the only thing that's important is making as much fucking money as possible. And B, bitches only want to take it from you and they're not worth anything. That's the entire impetus for these podcasts. And that's my main issue. And that's why we got to talk about them a little bit and drag them out. Now, dude, like one thing that these guys need to realize is it's not 1930, you know, it's not 1930 anymore. And women 
are probably stronger than you, dude. I mean, we don't even have to say it, but they're for sure smarter than fucking Trevor, Tanner, and Trent. You know what I'm saying? The triple T's on this podcast that we're observing right now, their entire vibe is I was MVP at the last banquet of my football season. And because of that, I'm the shit. You know, also the women hatred that we're going to go over, it obviously stems from they had one bad experience, right? Or, or they got told no once and it's like, you're such a little bitch blankie and you think you're God's gift to the earth that now it's their fault. Now they're the reason it's not you, you know, there's no such thing as self-reflection. Now, another fucking huge shout out to Penguins Zero and Chad Chad because, dude, I could. there's no fucking way I could have self-researched this shit. There's no fucking way I could have listened to these podcasts in their entirety because you feel it. You feel, They said, yeah, 326 times in a 30-second fucking clip because they don't know. Now, imagine that stretched out over an hour and a half. Imagine just the stupidest conversation taking place where no one's actually making a point, but everyone's saying, yeah, good point for an hour and a half. And it's about, quote, bitches, right? Now, these guys, they did this thing where they were like, okay, based off of what social media is reporting back to us, women don't like us, okay? And that's not what we want. So what we want to do, since we're just, since we're the voice of men, since we're the vo voice of the dominant fucking gender. You know what I mean? <laughs> Since we are the pinnacle of male existence, we should probably bring a woman on to have that voice. We should have her be a guest. And that way she can just help answer our questions that we have. What your boyfriend brings to the table or what you expect him to bring to the table. Um, or even any man not yeah. like we don't even have to like focus on your guy but right. just any what, well, if, any what does a guy have to, to do respectful okay um so looks looks don't play a role in the first hey okay don't throw a fucking spoke don't throw a fucking stick in the spokes of her first answer if that's her starting spot if she's looking for a guy and her starting spot is he should be respectful. And then that guy comes in with, so looks don't play a part. Let her say more than three words. First first part. She gotta go. Just let her go. Oh, yeah, let her go. so let her go. fucking looks don't condescending. Play a role in the first, first part. She gotta go. Just let her go. Dude, could you imagine being her? Could you imagine being like, I just want to know what like you expect from like any man. And she goes, well... I, he would have to be respectful. Oh, so looks don't play a part. Let her go. Let her go. Let's hear. Let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> let's hear. Let's hear. Let's hear what super smart shit's gonna come out of her mouth. Could you imagine being her in that situation, dude? Fuck you. <laughs> let her go. Let her go. It's obviously gonna be dumb because she's a woman. Yeah, let her go. Relax, buddy. Let her go. And the thing is, is we can't even watch any more of that fucking clip because they don't let her talk for the entirety of the fucking podcast. I'll show you a fucking other example of that. When you're getting all those girls dirty, that's why they're dirty. That makes no, them. No, 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 no. I got this right here. I got this right here. Ooh, lay it down for us, Travis. Women preserve their value. Men create it. Let me explain. Exactly. Oh, the... <laughs> I was about to come in with a sarcastic thing, and his buddy beat me to the punch. Exactly. Except for he meant it. You know what I mean? So let's hear that just fucking bomb drop piece of knowledge. No, 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 no. no. I got this right here. I got this right here. Women preserve their value. Men create it. In other words, in his mind, women are born with a certain amount of value and don't actually work to make a name for themselves or earn their place. They're born with it. Men are born with nothing and have to earn their place. So in layman's terms, what he's saying is women don't work for their place because they don't have work ethic. It's just handed to them. Everything comes super fucking easy, right?
Everything comes super easy. Dude, such a poignant point. Thank you for voicing it. Oh, no, 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 no. I got this right here. I got this right here. Women preserve their value. Men create it. Let me explain. Exactly. Oh, I can't wait to hear you stumble through this explanation, bro. W women, guys care about a girl's past. A girl cares about a guy's future. Just like, just like if you're no, a boyfriend. I care about hold your up, past. Hold up, hold oh, up. Oh. oh, be careful, bro. You almost let her say a fucking three words. Yeah, I know. She was responding to the point you just made. You almost, you almost just let her have a thought. Holy fuck, could you imagine, dude? Could you imagine if you would have fucked up and not cut her off for the th fucking 300th time in that fucking episode? Dude, it's all good. It's all good. And I would say, hey, who hurt you? But we know who hurt you. You're prob probably your fucking freshman year in high school girlfriend, you know, said this isn't working out. And you said women are the worst, you know women suck and it's like dude you have to understand that nowadays as opposed to the past when women weren't treated fairly you know how there's been the whole fucking suffrage thing going on it's like you understand that it's just people it's just human beings on the same fucking playing field right like everyone is worth just as much as the next person okay but not in your mind in your mind you have that classic, um, the, men has, the man has to provide because I'm better, you know. And then you turn that into a fucking, <laughs> what's it called? You're a, <laughs> the fucking martyr. You just martyr it where it's like, as a man, I have to provide. And then <laughs> once you're there, like say you become financially stable or financially independent whatever the fuck you want to say once you get that position you're like what the fucking man has to make all the money like that's you dude i hate the fact that anyone can fucking buy a microphone and talk into people's ears because guess what certain people are going to hear it and be like they're right i am more important you're not dude okay you want to know how to get a woman all right a stable, strong, independent woman. You want to know how to get that woman? Treat her as a stable, strong, independent person. Holy shit. The entire fucking vibe of them is like, you belittle women so that they feel less than, so that then maybe they'll fucking hook up with you. Because you see yourself... As less than, deep down. You wouldn't ever voice that, but you see yourself as an inferior being. That's why you talk so much about trying to be a superior being, right? But since you see yourself as inferior, you think that in order for a woman to get with you, you got to chop her down a few levels, make her fucking insecure, and then maybe she'll be emotionally broken enough to fucking step up to the plate with you, right? You know how fucking twisted and backwards that is? All it is is just guys who hate themselves. Deep down, they feel like failures. They feel like letdowns. And it's like, dude, I'm sorry, sad, you know. Hey, dude, I'm sorry, bummer, you know. But also not her problem. Okay? It's 101. It's 101, love yourself. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Love Yourself 101. Uh, I am your professor, Vincent James Julio. There's not a doctor there because there's no fucking way that I would finish a doctorate program in any college in any specialty. But if everyone could please have a seat. Welcome to the first class. Lesson one, love yourself before you try to get with the opposite sex. All right, please open your books. This is going to be a really, really fucking short one. And if you open your page, you see one sentence and it says, uh, if you don't love yourself, don't project your insecurities onto other people. Let's turn to the next chapter. Dude, that's really all it fucking breaks down to. I mean, these guys are bitches. Cucks. And they're cucks to their own fucking brain. And that's the worst kind of cuck, dude. The worst kind. They wake up and they're like, all right, time to hit this fucking ground running. I'm going to take my 20-minute cold shower because... Progress only happens through pain. And then I'm going to read my fucking book, you know, 
and it's from a military war vet. I've never been in the military because I don't have the stones and there's no way I would pass the psyche valve. But I'm going to read these war stories. I'm going to get real fired up about what fucking masculinity is. You know what masculinity is? <laughs> Taking care of your responsibilities and being comfortable in who you are. That's all fucking masculinity is. All right? That's all just being an adult is. That's not even masculinity, dude. That's just maturity. Maturity. There's no alpha male, beta male, female, any of it. It's fucking being comfortable with who you are, being confident in who you are as a person, and taking care of your responsibilities. Dude, Jordan and I were talking about this the other day. She, you know, We were talking about some people that we know. They're not really like close friends of ours or anything, but we understand that the guy is constantly dragging the family down all the time because he's like, they were, they were together and then they weren't and then they had a kid and then they were in a troubled spot again. And so they had another kid to try to fix the relationship. We know how that usually fucking works out. But the main reason that it was falling apart is because he kept trying to do different things independent of the family. Like he kept, he, he would have these ventures, you know, business ventures where it was like, I'm going to try to do this. And he would fucking dive in for three months, all the while neglecting his responsibilities at home and understanding that it's not a financial, financially stable situation to raise a family in. So it adds the stress of money to the family, yada, yada, yada. But his whole thing was like, it doesn't fucking matter. It's what I want to do. Right. And one thing that you got to understand if you're going to be in a healthy relationship, period, is that both sides sacrifice. Both sides sacrifice for the greater good of the outcome. Jordan and I were talking about there was a period where when I was wrestling in college, she worked and paid for our apartment, right? And now it's flipped. We're having babies and I'm fucking working, paying for our house while she takes care of the babies, right? And we're talking about how neither of us liked that the other person had to do that necessarily. It felt like you weren't upholding your end of the bargain, but at no point were we resentful towards each other in that because we understood that it was for the greater good of the team at the time. We just keep progressing forward through this life until you get to sit in a living room and watch your daughters interact with each other while you hold hands with your wife on the couch and you realize that this is what everything is meant for. This feeling right here is what it was all for. That's what it's for. It's for... Your wife, you're holding your brand new baby and your wife walks out your one and a half year old to Christmas and you get to adorn her with Christmas presents because you guys scraped together enough money and made enough intelligent decisions that you were able to give her presents on Christmas. And it was that special moment where it's like Rice Krispies and peanut butter. You suffer and sacrifice little bits evenly for the greater outcome, okay? And this whole fucking mindset of these guys is, I do everything, so now you do everything for me. And it's fucking awful, dude. It's wrong. It's wrong. Guys, cucks to their own fucking brain. And I'll tell you one thing. I for sure, say I'd never met Jordan. I feel like for sure, I would have fallen for the fucking trap of listening to these fucking ass hats if I wouldn't have found my wife because finding my wife did not make me go I'm going to I'm going to win this bitch and then she's going to be mine you know finding my wife finding my wife made me go why isn't she into me first of all right which is super fucking arrogant to say but at that time in my life, whatever, picked girls that were like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Easy at the time, you know, because we were all young and dumb and full of cum. You know what I'm saying? But finding my wife, she's not into me. I didn't go, what the fuck is her problem? You know, my friends tried to talk me into the what the fuck is her problem thing. But I didn't go, what the fuck is her problem? I went, why? You want to know why? Because she saw immaturity in me. Because she was a strong fucking woman who s s did not see 
a strong, stable guy with a fucking crazy, strong future ahead of him. Why? Because I was immature. Because I was immature, I was fucking around with like everything. I was fucking around with school. Uh, the only thing I gave a shit about was sports. And when you only give a shit about one thing, everything else falls apart. And if you're not showing that you care about these other responsibilities, why the fuck would that interest the opposite sex? You know what I'm saying? Why the fuck would that interest a fucking life partner? It wouldn't. Not a good one. Okay? Not if you're a... Uh, the fuck is the word enabler like you could be an enabler and be like i i can fix him i like him because he's a bad boy don't do that grow up pick someone stable but i self-reflected and then i turned into a better man because of my wife not in spite of my wife i didn't turn into a a guy <laughs> i said oh no there's something wrong with the way that i'm living the way that i am being in my day-to-day -day, that is not allowing this extremely high caliber of woman to be interested in me? Not what can I do to try to fucking trick her or win her over, but what can I, what adjustments can I make? What, what more responsibility and ownership can I take on my own life? to where it'll send me in a fucking strong trajectory forward to where I can be a highly functioning adult and a good life partner. She always says, she's like, you say this all the time. She, she'll always say like, you say this all the time, but I don't even recall you ever being super immature. And I was like, yeah, because you didn't see me as that for the first three months that we knew each other. I was into her fucking minute one. But she didn't see me as someone that she would be interested in until three months later when I had started making adjustments into the responsibility of who I was as an adult. I was still a fucking high schooler, basically. I was acting like a fucking high schooler. And that's what these guys are. These guys fucking got laid a few times, being a dick to women, you know, got them laid a few fucking times. And then they're like, you know what we should do? Start a fucking podcast because this is what it's all about. But then at the foundation, they're super insecure and they're not proud of themselves. Dude, do things that make you proud of yourself and grow the fuck up. All right. Now, cheer up, babe. The podcast episode 52 is, you know, they had some, uh, there's some jokes sprinkled in there, but it's just fucking sad, dude. I'm raising two girls and these are the fucking, this is the pool. This is the pool that they're fucking picking out of. Dude, eat my whole fucking asshole. And a whole nother thing for why I don't like it is they present themselves as a fucking high class male like they say like i'm the type of guy that you should want to be with and who you should want to be and it's like what an emotionally unstable guy who bottles up his feelings and then lashes out towards other people rather than just self-reflecting and being a fucking adult and it's like i don't want younger people to hear these things and go 100 fucking percent you can be an absolute fucking monster of a human being you can be a badass. Let's say you could physically dismantle 99% of the population. Cool. Awesome. You could be fucking smarter than 99% of the population. Cool. Fucking awesome. Be that. Get as smart as you possibly fucking can. Get as skilled. As, this is for the guys. Get as skilled and as strong and as powerful as you possibly fucking can. And control it. An alpha male is not someone who fucking lashes out, all right? A high class of man is not someone who is aggressive and explosive. It's someone who has the capability to handle business, right, but controls it and never has to use it because you can be articulate enough and smart enough that you don't let your emotions get the best of you. And also being emotion emotionally vulnerable to another person is a fucking positive thing. You want to know why? Builds trust. Keeping your emotions locked down and locked in and just keeping them to yourself until you go on little fucking rage fits or lean on fucking outside things like drugs and alcohol and all that kind of shit because you're just fucking sad inside and you're trying to drown it out. Hey, how about you just fucking have a chat about why you're feeling the way you're feeling with the person that you want to be your partner? And that was uh, Love Yourself 101. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the fucking first lecture. Dude, I... J <sighs>
fuck these guys. And that's the end of the fucking point. Okay. Just like, just fucking insane, dude. And I have, I have plenty of friends that are still this way. I, I shouldn't say that. It's kind of like politics. I have a lot of friends that are in the fucking middle. I have a lot of friends that are like bitches, man, but it's all talk. I have a lot of friends that are like fucking women and it's all fucking talk because they know that they would be nothing without their lady. Okay. Now, I don't know what their problem is, why they feel like they have to project the fact that their woman is irritating or annoying or a bane of their existence or some shit like that, but they know that they would be fucking nothing without their woman. All right. And these guys are one pure end of the spectrum. I'm probably closer to the other fucking side. And I have a whole shit ton of friends that are right down the fucking middle where I'm just like, hey, it's fun to joke around. You know, it's fun to bullshit with the guys in the quote locker room. Right. Which is essentially a bar now that we're older. But I hope that you fucking know that that's not the true emotions that you feel towards your better half. Right. You know that. And it's just like, fuck, man. This, this is my, this is my uh, opposition in the running for podcasting, okay? And the fucking thing is, is these guys clip this shit and then it goes viral because it goes hate viral, right? So they, it gets a ton of eyes and then it gets a ton of fucking hate comments, but eyes are eyes in social media, right? So it looks like they're just popping the fuck off. But it's like, what do you want your legacy to be? You want your legacy to be that the only thing I fucking care about is getting fucking rich as fuck, direct quote, and that you fuck mad bitches because now you're rich, but you don't respect any of them. That's what you want your legacy. I'm sure if you talk to any of these guys, it'd be like, yeah, but I'm saying something right. It fucking went viral. You know, eyes are eyes. I'm fucking, I'm getting fucking popular. My fame is growing because of it. It's like, that's what you want to be famous for. (laughs) That's what you want to be known for being a fucking fake immature dude cool dude whatever floats your fucking boat i guess jesus I am what I am. I'm a hooligan. Hooligan. let's do some unqualified dad advice <laughs> all right i'm on the advice column on reddit and dude i don't know what happened but they took off the covid19 posts and comments are no longer allowed on the subreddit whatever the fuck they say right COVID-19 posts and comments or whatever the fuck it said they took it off it's not on here anymore so if you need to ask about COVID go to the advice subreddit I'm just kidding don't do that I'm fucking freezing hold on all right I'm fucking back and I'm in I'm in the I'm in the merch dude okay not mine I'm in our boys merch all right we got Terrence T-Rex McKinney fucking merchandise on got the crew cut classic sweatshirt he's my boy dude you know what I'm saying? My, my boy's in the fucking UFC knocking bitches out. Just fucking sleeping grown-ass men, dude. And that's my fucking teammate. That's why, that's why we like Terrence T-Rex McKinney. Now, if you asked one of these alpha male podcasts, they'd be like, pretty fucking gay. You have another guy on your shirt. Is it gay? If it's gay, call me fucking the one social media guy that puts, what the fuck is his name? Charles? Something, Charles? Actually, wait, no. Isn't he like a pedophile or some shit? I don't know, dude. My finger's so off the fucking pulse of, like, the trending topics on social media. Call me Neil Patrick Harris, all right? If rocking your fucking teammates merch who you wrestled with in college and now homeboy is in the UFC, he's in the pinnacle league of MMA, he's at the top. Of that, if wearing his merch in support of him is gay, call me Neil Patrick Harris. All right? Because you're goddamn right. I'm just fucking proud, dude. Also, comfortable as all fucking get out, Terrence. If you see this, bro, comfortable as all fucking hell. All right? But we're warm now. It's time to get on the, uh, it's time to get on some unqualified dad advice. Uh, COVID-19 posted comments are no longer allowed on the subreddit. And I just said that it's no longer on there. So we're going to scroll. We're going to stop and we're going to see if we can help some people on the internet. I got $240 saved up. What should I do with it? (laughs) Buy one tank of gas. (laughs) This is from, uh, responsible set six, one, nine, zero. 
Hey, Reddit, I don't know if I'm supposed to ask here or somewhere else, but I just wanted to let you know that I've got $240 saved up and I have no clue what to do with it. If you want to say that I should invest in crypto or stocks, then I can't since it's banned where I live. I would love if someone could give me financial advice on how to use it properly and invest it. I mean, in terms of investing, wrong guy, you know. I get an extra $400 in my fucking bank account, and the first thing I do is buy myself a fucking skull shaver. And that's a true thing, all right? I bought myself a skull shaver because I'm so sick of bicking my head, all right? Because your man's just fully accepting the Lex Luthor look. The man, Your man's just fully accepting Walter White the early years. Actually, I'm not Walter White the early years anymore because I shaved my face. You want to know why I shaved my face, all right? I was in the middle of throws with my wife. All right, that's layman's terms for doing the hippity dippity. All right, try not trying to keep it not explicit because my entire family listens to, listens to this podcast. But I was in the middle of throws with my wife, and as I'm in the middle of throws, she pulls away and she goes, "I think I want you to shave your face." Now my brain, being stupid, goes, "Right now? <laughs> Wait, hold on. I didn't. I didn't voice this." I didn't put this into words because I knew how stupid it would have been. Probably would have been a little bit of a mood killer if I said, right now, I'm a little busy, uh, kind of in the middle of something. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if you're in the middle of throws with your wife and something's throwing her off, remove it. So shave my face. If you want to know why I shave my face, that's why. And I could have just said, because I felt like it, but I'm honest with you, babe. I tell the truth on this podcast, and that's the truth. So that's the full fucking story. You're welcome, all right? Now, don't know why I started talking about my facial hair, but uh, this kid has $240 saved up, and he doesn't know where he should invest it. Um, and it says that crypto and stocks is illegal there or whatever. Oh, it's banned where I live, so foreign or something like that. Um, keep saving it, I guess. Let it build. But in your mattress, I guess, if shit's banned. Or put it in his fucking savings account. Put it in a fucking LDL or whatever the fuck it's called. C C CDL. Where you could just throw money in there and it's like the highest interest and you just can set the time for five years. And if you like set it to a certain amount of time or a longer amount of time, the annual interest rate increases and then you could just build from there you know what i mean i guess i don't know dude that's a dumb one i'm sorry it's 240 dollars. have fucking fun with it i guess dude i don't know because i don't know your background i don't know your situation i don't want to be insensitive but 240 dollars if that's a lot for you awesome dude spoil yourself or keep saving it what a fucking strange question next post scroll stop Girlfriend jealous of her best friend. All right. My 16-year-old may... Oh, this is from a 16-year-old kid who has a girlfriend who's 15. Okay, let me put on my dad hat for a second. Cool week. And let's fucking do this. My girlfriend is jealous of her best friend and I don't know how to help. Her last ex broke up with her to start dating her best friend. Ooh. And her ex before that cheated on her with her best friend. Okay, hold on. There's They said the word best friend and ex so many times that I got lost along that. Okay, so this kid has a girlfriend. The girlfriend is jealous of her best friend. Her best friend is dating her ex-boyfriend. Her ex before that cheated on her with her best friend. Hold, hold on. So her last ex broke up with her to start dating her best friend. And then her ex before that one cheated on her with this best friend. Dude, so not a best friend. Okay? So a scooper duper. All right? So a eyes on the prize. Whoever you're dating is going to be inside me next. Okay? Probably shouldn't say inside me. These are fucking teenagers. But whatever. Have you seen Euphoria? Apparently everybody's getting it. He lied to the best friend and said they're been a breakup oh okay all right so the guy that cheated on her whatever the fuck dude your your girlfriend has a best friend who's a little bit of a fucking homewrecker 
So the kid says, and I just want her to be comfortable and happy with herself. She's really insecure and thinks that her best friend is better than her at pretty much everything. More attractive, smarter, has more friends, etc. Is there anything that I could do to help her feel better about it? Don't fuck her best friend, maybe. I would say start with fucking ending the cycle of whoever she's dating ends up <laughs> on her best friend. Okay? Don't do that. Okay? And just continue to fucking love her. Also, maybe try to convince her to pick better friends, you know? Maybe have a real heartfelt, honest conversation with her about who, what company she's keeping. You know what I mean? Because, wow. I mean, back to back in it like that? I hate, I, I hate to say this about a young fucking kid, but best friend is a hoe back, right? I mean, just slinging. Jesus. Yeah, convince her to not fucking hang out with her best friend anymore. And also just gas her up on the daily. Just gas her up and be like, you're awesome. You're awesome. You're, you're so hot and you're so smart. And you're so much better than fucking Alicia, who just loves taking your seconds. Jesus. I guess. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. So far, I, so far I feel like we're 0 for 2. So we're going to scroll. And we're going to stop. I want to burn fat and weight, but don't know how. Nope. I've talked about nutrition on this podcast before. I don't want to do it again. That doesn't sound fun to me. Sorry. So far, not so good. I'm just not loving the shit. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Stop. Constantly feel ill and mentally drained. Any advice? So, for context, I have depression and anxiety and have for a few years. In the past three to four months, both my mental and physical health has been deteriorating. Physically, I constantly feel tired. Even if I'm motivated to do something, my body feels genuinely exhausted. I get bad brain fog where I can't remember much or focus on anything, headaches, and stomach pain. On top of this, even when I get a full eight hours of sleep, it doesn't feel satisfying and I feel equally tired throughout the day. Mentally... Recently, my system, symptoms have gotten much worse. Instead of feeling depressed and unmotivated, I get in weird, weird moods where it's like I'm detached, disconnected from the place I'm in. I feel intensely depressed, like I'm about to have some sort of mental break. When I get in these moods, I feel like I have to be alone, which is difficult because I just moved in with my girlfriend and I hate wanting to be alone all the time when we're doing something. On top of these feelings, I also feel suffer from crippling anxiety like panic attacks as well as recently OCD intrusive thought patterns. Oh my God, I hope you're seeing a therapist. I feel like I can never get better. I've gotten blood tests done and been told nothing is wrong with me. Been to psychologists, been to psychologists, but that didn't seem to help. I just started on Valdoxin recently, but that hasn't had a notif noticeable effect yet. I try to get myself in better habits, but I feel so physically unwell all the time that it's hard to even get off the couch sometimes. I'm just at a lost place, and I desperately want to get better. I'm only 20. I want to be living my life and pursuing my passions rather than at home miserable and sick all the time. I also feel like it's affecting my relationship in that I'm always down about something. I want to be a beacon of positivity and good energy, not the opposite. Please, if anyone has any... Oh, my God. This one's tough because it's like, dude, it sounds like it's legitimate issues. It doesn't sound like you're just kind of being a fucking sad sack. It sounds like you should probably actually look for some help. Like, you said psychologist, but like, how much of an effort did you really give? And how honest were you there? You, you need to trust... A therapist. I would say you go to a therapist. I don't know if a psychologist and a therapist are necessarily the same things. I feel like a psychologist like really analyzes the shit out of you, but a therapist helps you through uh, your problems and helps you get to where you want to be. Would that be an astute observation? This is coming from a guy who's never been to either. Okay. But I would say that get a therapist, one that you like, and then full send with them and truly work on the things that they're telling you to work on and don't be um, not resentful, but don't give them pushback on it. Try everything that they offer up just to see if it's something might work because it sounds like by the sounds of it, you have a lot of work to do. Okay. This is not something where a switch is going to flip and you're just going to fucking feel excellent 
Also, this is so douchey to say, but I know that it's effective because it releases endorphins. Maybe try exercising. And I know it says that you're exhausted, but if you eat a little bit better and maybe like this is this could this could be a no this could be an all miss. This could be a no hitter here, but if you eat like shit, you're going to feel like shit. So be honest with yourself about how much fucking sugar you're having throughout the day and maybe cut your sugar out. And I'm not saying that that's the solve all. I'm saying in terms of your energy, maybe it'll help with your energy. Cut sugar, try to exercise a little bit. And then the big one, the most important one is see a therapist and try to actually work through these issues that you're having. And don't be so uh, like pessimistic. Don't be pessimistic towards seeing a therapist. Be optimistic towards seeing a therapist and being like, maybe this will help. Because if you go in with maybe this will help, you'll be more open to their ideas on certain practices and things that you could work on. And hopefully it'll help you fix it. Or, or if you don't do those things, just be fucking sad. You know, that's the other option. Just to stay fucking sad and hope that you get the right dosage of pills or the right pill or this and that. You know, and I'm, gonna, I'm not saying anything against antidepressants or against pills, but I'm saying you can't just hope to find the right pill without actually working on yourself. OK, it's got to be it's got to both work simpatico That's a word, right? Scroll. Stop. I feel trapped. How can I get out of this situation by fantastic, brilliant eight? This is from a 20 year old woman. I made loss, lost, oh, she meant lots. I made lots of bad financial decisions that lead me to being in debt. I'm failing school. I don't receive any financial help, so I have to work in order to take care of my own expenses. Currently getting paid minimum wage, so I struggle a lot. Last year, I had to have therapy or ongoing mental issue, and I am still suffering from an heartbreak. So many vocabulary fucking mistakes. It's all good. It's fine. I soldier on. I liked that guy a lot, but I was immature and emotionally unavailable all the time. Strange thing. I see him often in town. We don't talk anymore and just ignore each other, but it just hurts. It's been a year and I can't seem to move on. I'm having a hard fall out with the group of friends I used to have. Basically, they're all very religious and I am not anymore. I am tired of being judged and having acted like I care. I basically don't have a social circle anymore. Anyways, I wish I could start over in a new city with new people. I also want to change my major because I don't really like what I'm doing, but I can't. I have been trying to get over this feeling for the past six months, but it's getting stronger and stronger. I have even contemplated suicide. I mean, it always fucking circles back to that, dude. Do you... That's not... All right, we're not going to get into it. I want to leave this place so bad, and I know this is all my fault because I've ruined my life by making wrong decisions. You are in a negative feedback loop with your own fucking brain where you're just kind of pity partying your way through your entire life. Sure, you might have fucked up in a few things. Nothing that's not fixable. Nothing that can't be rectified. Debt can be dug out of. It takes time. It takes work. And it takes effort, but debt can be dug out of. You're failing school, that can be dug out of. Why? Or I mean, how? Why? Why? Because it can. How? By fucking stepping up and taking care of your responsibilities. Okay? Get to class. Do your homework. Do the shit. I understand that you have to work in order to pay for yourself. Maybe find something that's a little bit of a cheaper option so that there's a little bit of stress relieved on how much you have to work, right? Or the type of work that you have to do. You want to change your major? Change it. You have time. Change your major. Find something that is going to make you happy, okay? And content, all right? Content is peace. Peace is happy. Does that make sense? Okay, you had a bad breakup. Sucks, sucks. All right, but also can be mended. A broken relationship is not the end of the world. It's the end of that relationship. It's a good thing. No perfect relationship ended. You know what I'm saying? So 
you have a new social circle, great. Reset button on your friends. Find people that align with who you want to be and what your interests are. All of this can be spun into a positive thing, and you can easily dig yourself out of all of this. Now, the only thing you have to do is have a backbone towards it and go into the fire. Be like, this is going to be hard. This is going to take a lot of fucking work. God, I'm going to be exhausted sometimes. But how fucking proud will you be of yourself when you've come out the other side? Right? Everything worth, everything worth having takes effort. Takes work. So, stop negative feedback looping that you're trapped. And don't play the victim to your own fucking life. Switch it around. Know where you want to go and fucking head first that direction. Okay? Take school serious. Go to your classes. Do the fucking homework. Put in the time. You don't have that friend group anymore? Perfect. Less distractions. Find who you want to be and go be that person. This is all positive. You already hit your reset button. So step up. Step up to the fucking plate. Scroll. Stop. I don't know what to do with my life. No, let's talk about my friend knocking a guy out on a, at the bar on his wedding night. <laughs> now, I was at a wedding, okay? Names for legal purposes will be left out of this. I was at my buddy's wedding and I was in the wedding. So, Natch, your boy was looking fucking dapper Dan, all right? I was feeling fresh to death. My wife was pregnant with Charlotte and she was in... Uh, she was on the, what the fuck's it called? Bridesmaid, maid of honor, whatever the fuck. Um, so she's in the fucking wedding dress up too. You know, she's fucking, I mean, she was like seven months pregnant, eight months pregnant, about to fucking pop. And she was a smoke show, hottest pregnant woman on the planet. Okay. And you better believe titties were out. So we were at the, <laughs> We were uh, at the wedding. It was all fucking, it was a great time. It was beautiful. Everyone had a great time. And then we went out. So the wedding closes because it was held at like this conference hall at the hotel where everyone was staying at. Like that's where the uh, reception was held. And so, but that place, it's like, all right, it's midnight. That's it, right? This is, this is a hotel. We have rules. So we go, let's go downtown. Let's go downtown in our wedding attire, right? It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fucking hunky dory time. Everyone's going to have a blast. We go down and it was really cool. So the way that this, uh, these bars were set up, every, every bar was like right next to each other and they made like a square. So you had to like walk off of the main road and you go into this, like, I don't know, like a, it looked like a fucking thing you would see on like a college campus where it's just like a square in the middle of all the buildings where like the college kids hang out but it was like bars instead of places for learning and as we're walking through there they're in their fucking bride and groom outfits they're in their tux and their wedding dress people started cheering like cheering like congratulations fuck yeah everyone's all fucked up it's like 1 a.m at this point fuck yeah sick congratulate it was actually really fucking cool right and we're all walking as the wedding or as the bridal party and we're walking and we go into the first bar and the first bar dude i'm 29 now i don't know how i liked this shit i don't know how six seven years ago i would walk into one of these bars and i was like this is my spot and this is fun the weird thing is is they had a playlist going of jerkin' music from way back in the day. You know, like 2010s jerkin' music. You know, teach me how to jerk. Teach me, teach me how to jerk. Teach me how to jerk. Teach me, teach me how to jerk. That shit was bumping. And you know what else was bumping? Everybody into me. Because it was shoulder to shoulder, and I was irritated. But when I go out with my boys, I know that my boys are going to get fucking shit wasted hammered. And everyone was already shit wasted hammered at this point. So I go on red alert. All right. There's something that it's something that I've always done where it's like, we're going to go out. We're going to have a good time. No one's getting arrested. All right. That's the fucking main thing. I've got it. You know how many fucking teammates of mine I've carried 
out of bars from fights. I've literally stood. There's this one fucking guy. The guy I bought the fucking ha- my house from. The guy I bought my fucking house from that my family currently lives in. So many times he'd be face to face with a fucking guy at the bar. And I've literally slid in between the two, picked him up, put him on my shoulder, and we'd have walked out of the bar. And I say so many times and it was really like four. But so that's just always what I've done, right? That's always what I fucking just, I don't know why. I don't know why. I just was like, no one's getting fucking arrested because nobody at this bar is worth it. You know, nobody's in this bar is worth a fucking record. So, and now take a bridal party and it's my fucking, one of my best friend's weddings and not the Julia Roberts movie, this instance. And I go, oh, crank it up to 11. I've got eyes on them like hawks the whole time. Didn't take long for me to have to kick into fucking action because we walk into the bar and it's fucking teach me how to jerk. Teach me, teach me how to jerk. And we're shoulder to shoulder. And the bride is shit housed, right? Like she's like fucking, yeah, fucking having fun, right? And the the groom is off to the right of me. And the bride starts kind of shifting away. And the groom goes, Hey, will you keep an eye on her? And I was like, not a fucking problem. I turned to her. All right. We got like five of our friends in between me and the bride, but I can still see her. She's about 10 feet away. And the entire timing of this, I'll break it down the entire timing of this next instance in real time. Bride starts dancing away. Hey, bro, can you keep an eye on her? And yeah, no problem. Turn. Watch, watch, watch one of the guys that's standing right there. He just knocked that guy out. Turn back. Guy asleep on the floor next to my foot. Groom standing over the top of him. It was that fast. It That was real time. And I see him. This guy's sleeping on the floor. And I go, he's not responsibility. Or he's not my responsibility. You know who's my responsibility? The fucking groom. So I grab the groom. And I pull him into the crowd away from the situation because the guy asleep on the floor was fine. He already had three guys picking him up. Now he was asleep, but he already had three guys picking him up. So I was like, okay, they'll take care of him. I'm grabbing the groom and I'm going. Now the bride was also right fucking there. Okay. Like I said, she wasn't that far away, grabbed her and I just boom, put them in front of me and walk them out of the fucking bar. And that's their wedding night, okay? So I walk him out of the bar, and it was so funny because the groom is like, did you fucking hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? Did you fucking hear what he said? And the bride's going, babe, why'd you do that? I was having such a good time. (laughs) And then he started feeling bad, and he goes, I shouldn't have fucking done that. I shouldn't have done that. And I go, hey, but what a great story for your kids. (laughs) I guess. Hey, let's paint this. Let's paint this with a happy brush and let's go. Hey, mom, dad, tell me what happened on your wedding night. How was your wedding? Was it fun? Yeah, it was a great time. You're within the first six minutes of walking into the first bar after the reception. Your dad knocked a guy unconscious on the ground because he was being disrespectful. Now, you might ask, was it warranted? No, it's never warranted. And my favorite part is they were both so drunk, they were they were both like, we didn't have to leave the bar. They, it was so packed in there, they wouldn't have figured out who did it. You're wearing a tuxedo and a fucking gown, okay? You have a wedding dress on and a tuxedo. If anyone is going to get spotted, it's you, okay? So don't do that. Don't do that. But that's the, uh, all right. That's the end of the episode. Don't know why I fucking told that story. It's just the unqualified dad advice section that today was just not it. And sometimes if you go to a fucking wedding, you got to tell the story because you forgot to tell the story because the groom is out there. Just apparently you walk in to hear jerking music and you get irritated The groom just had the happiest day of his entire life, except for if he goes downtown, little do you know, on the inside of his brain, looking for the next sorry fuck, cock and muscle. And he did.
Okay, so sometimes you just got to tell that fucking story. All right, babe, that's Cheer Up, Babe, the podcast, episode 52. I hope you had a good time. We had to get a little, we had to fucking, we didn't actually drop the cadence because there was 0% chance that I was going to drop the cadence on you, okay? Because you're the one listening. I'm not actually talking to Tanner, Travis, and Trent, okay? I'm not actually talking to them, all right? I'm not actually talking to the fucking half of my goddamn football team in high school that are still the exact same way even though it's literally 11 years later i'm not talking to those guys directly i'm talking to my cubs you know what i mean i'm talking to my cubs so i'm not going to drop the cadence on my cubs for no fucking reason all right i'm not going to look through my eyebrow and drop my cadence like i'm talking to a fucking dad at the public library about how he needs to change his daughter's name okay I'm talking to my cups, so I'm going to keep it upbeat. We're going to keep it light. We're going to keep it fun. All right, babe. Have a great fucking week this week, okay? You're going to fucking crush it, all right? You don't have to posture up anymore. Slouch a little bit, you know? Go about your day, a little smile on your face. You're going to have fucking, it's going to be perfect. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be great. Go out there. Don't be a bummer. And cheer up, babe.